at sa ating mga panel sa sa, sa Romeo at sa Peter Benmar. Kami pong uh, class advisor na si Sir Bodo Mali, ang ating pinakmampal na resident po sa Mastorolita, Pilipinas. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Our case for today is about asthma. But before we proceed, please allow me to introduce the members of Group 3. Let's start with Mr. Kim Valenza. We will give the knowledge about asthma disease and the signs and symptoms of asthma. We turn at July to discuss the prevention and treatment of asthma. And your school lead, my name is Dr. Mariano Reyes, and I will be sharing the triggering factors of asthma. Yes, okay, good afternoon to all. Good afternoon, Ma'am Ronnie, to our panelists and to my fellow classmates, and also to our visitors. Today, we are going to discuss our new plan for our patient, Carmela Isabel Reyes, who is 8 years old, Filipina with a history of asthma. Before we discuss our new plan, we would like to first inform you all about asthma. It's triggering factors, signs and symptoms, how to reduce the occurrence of symptoms in some of the patients. Around the world, more than 300 million people suffer from asthma, and around 250,000 people die from it. Yes. So what is asthma? Asthma is a chronic lung disease that makes it harder to move air in the lungs. It affects the respiratory system or bronchioles. These airways have an inner lining called the mucosa that is surrounded by a layer of smooth muscles. If an asthmatic is exposed to triggers, the smooth rings of muscles that circle small airways in the lungs contract and becomes narrow. Simultaneously, the trigger worsens the causing the mucosa to become more swollen and secrete more mucus. This makes breathing difficult. Again, asthma is not contagious. While its causes are still unknown, researchers have determined that asthma can be caused by both hereditary and environmental factors. So, bago ko po kay like, Sir Rodel, may ipapakita po ako sa inyo isang illustration ng isa pong uh, may hika or asthma. Po ba natin? So ito po ay just an illustration. No? So ito po ay ang normal na daluyan ng hangin. Nakikita po natin na maluwag po ang loob, manipis po ang walls, at relax po siya ang smooth muscles. So dito po madaling makapasok at makalabas ang hangin. Sa asthmatic patient naman po, just like this, masikip po siya ang loob, and then makapal po yung walls niya at meron pong contraction na nagaganap dito sa mga smooth muscles at pukot po dito sa pangangapal at paninikip ng linings meron pa pong overproduction of mucus ito po yun, yung wind so further, nakakapagpahirap po ito sa pagdaloy ng hangin sa pagpasok at paglabas ito sa respiratory system so ayun po ang uh, airway po ng uh, taong meron pong asthma now I will give you to Sir Rodel for triggering factors. Thank you, Sir James. So, yung triggering factors po ng um, mga asthmatic patient, uh, depende po yan uh, uh, to each patient po, no? So, ang number one po na triggering factors ay ang exercise. Hindi naman po lahat ang exercise masama o bawal po sa isang pasyente na may asthma. Iwasan lang po natin ang heavy exercises. For adults, siguro po ito yung mga heavy lifting o kaya po yung extreme workout. At dahil po bata ang aming pasyente, makulit, takpon ng takpo, very active, iwasan lang po natin ang mapagod siya. Bakit po bawal siya mapagod? Minsan po kasi ang mga tao, they breathe through their mouths. Kaya po, they are inhaling colder and drier air. Yung, ma yung mga muscle bands po natin around our airways, o yung pundalo yan ng ating hangin ay maselan po, lalo na pag may changes in temperature. So ang nangyayari po, sumisikip ang ating airways, ang tendency po noon, hihingalin po ang pasyente at magsitrigger po yung kanyang asthma attack. 
Next po is pollens. Pollens, ito po yung mga powdery substance. Minsan, uh, nakikila, nakikita lang po ito through microscope. Dahil na hindi visible sa ating mga mata, uh, nandiyan lang po yan floating in the air, broken into tiny particles. At yung mga small particles na yan, pwede pong malanghap ng bata na pwede magpa-trigger ng kanilang asthma attack. Next, bugs in home. Panalit, panatilihin po natin malinis ang ating mga tahanan, lalo na po yung mga places kung saan po naglalaro yung mga bata, like yung sofa and kama. Uh, ito po yung nakakapag-trigger ng asthma attack, lalo na po yung mga bugs like dust mites. Yung pong dust mites na yan, they are too small para po makita ng mga mata natin. Yung pong uh, waste nila, uh, nagiging cost niya ng other chick para magpa-trigger po ng asthma attack. Next po is chemical fumes. Dahil po napaka-sensitive ng ating muscle bands around our airways, lalo na po sa mga bata, kapag po na-expose tayo sa iba't ibang kasi uh, ng chemical fuse, nagpo-cause po yan ng allergic reaction na nagpapa-trigger ng asthma attack. Next po is cold air. Na-experience na po ba natin yung maglakad tayo during uh, winter sa Cornish? Or sino, sino na po ba dito yung nakapunta sa mga uh, colder countries? Yung bansa po na may go. Di po ba kahit maglakad ka lang, ikmingaling ka at saka oh, na, nakakauhaw? Kasi po, cold air yung ating nalalangha and it is dry. Kaya po ang ating airways nagiging irritable at ang tendency po noon, mamamaga siya dahil mamamaga, magtitrigger po yung ating asthma attack. Next po, uh, fungus spars. Fungus or mold spars, mostly makikita po yan sa mga mushrooms pwede po yung nasa pakuran natin. Yan rin po ay isang powdery substance na pwedeng malanghap ng mga bata. Siyempre po dahil may Siyempre po dahil may kakulitan ng mga bata sa paglalaro, baka hindi natin napapansin na nalalanghap na po nila yung mga powdery substance na yan that it can get into their nose and into their lungs that can trigger asthma. Next, dust. Alikabok po. Isa po it contains tiny particles of pollen, mold, pinagsama-sama na po yan, pati po yung mga fibers, clothing, and fabrics, and detergents. All of this can also trigger allergies in asthma. Dahil tapos na tulit ang ating mga bata, dapat lagi po tayo nakabantay sa kanila, lalo na po kung asthmatic sila. Next po is go. Kahit po hindi tayo asthmatic, ay sadya pong nakakainis yung usok ng sigarilyo, di po ba? Yung ang aga-aga po ay nalalangkap natin is uh, yung usok ng sigarilyo. What more pa po sa bata? Kapag nakakalangkap po tayo ng usok, mamadaling ma-irritate yung lining ng ating airways. Kaya ang tendency po nun, magkakamag-trigger po ng asthma attack. Next po is strong odors. Marami pong pwedeng magpa-trigger ng asthma attack. Isa na po yan yung matatapang na amoy or strong odors. Anything from heavy scent or perfume to a household cleaner matatapang po na papango or chemical uh, na ginagamit natin sa baka ay pag yan po nalanghap natin at ng mga bata nakapag-trigger din po ng asthma attack. Next po is air pollution. Isa rin po yung uh, triggering factors po para sa asthma. Dahil po uh, madaling ma-irritate yung ating lungs at ang ating airways, uh, kaya pag nalanghap po natin ng mga pollution na yan, ma ma pwede po siya magpa-trigger ng asthma attack. Next po, anger and stress. Marunong na po bang magalit ang bata or meron na po ang stress at a very young age? Well, siguro po pag hindi nila nakukuha yung mga bagay na gusto nila, nagkakaroon po sila ng tantrum. Kaya mawala po sila at kapag galit po sila, under stress po sila at ang anger po or stress is an emotional asthma trigger. And last po, ang ating mga pets uh, o mga alaga po natin sa bahay. Majority po, majority po no, may mga alaga po tayo sa mga bahay, aso, pusa. Yan po ang pinaka-common. Nakakarelax po kapag meron tayong alaga sa ating mga bahay. At gustong gusto po yan nakalaro ng ating mga bata. Well, mga, mga kapatid po, hindi po yung animals ang nakakapag-trigger ng asthma. Yung pong ano, animal dander na tinatawag. Yung pong bala, ibubo nila. 
Kaya iwas iwasan lang po natin na ma-expose yung ating mga anak para po ma-prevent po yung uh, mas mabagkatigar ng kanilang asthma. Ngayon po, ipoproceed na po natin sa science and symptoms. Uh, ipagpasa ko na po kay Sir uh, Nathan. Last minute po, nag-backout po yung aming kagroup na si Sir Corson. Nag-take over po si Sir Nathan. Sir Nathan? Okay, thank you uh, Kuya Rotel. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Uh, now, I will discuss to you the ways on how to reduce the asthma. First, create a smoke-free smoke environment. It is very important that surroundings of the asthma patient is smoke-free. Smoke Everyone, not only the people with asthma, should be able to breathe smoke-free in restaurants, workplaces, public places, and most especially at home. What we can do as a caregiver to an asthma patient is to encourage or motivate any member of his or her family to quit smoking. Second, eliminate sources of mold. There's no practical way to eliminate all mold because it's been part of our lives ever since. But the way to, con but the way to control it is to limit moisture. Keeping humidity down reduces the chances of mold growth. Another way of reducing the asthma symptoms is keeping the pets out of the bedroom. Poor indoor air quality can worsen asthma and allergies, so it's best for our pets to stay out of our room to avoid animal dander, going into our nose and talking to allergy reactions that can cause an asthma attack. Prevent fuel burning appliances outside. A strong odor like fuel or gasoline can trigger an attack. If you are using a gasoline stove, cook outside of your house or away from your asthma patient. Get rid of your house pests and dust mites. Pests and dust mites are too small to see with the naked eye, and they can cause allergic reactions that can trigger asthma attacks. So it is best to always clean your house on a daily basis. Lastly, we have to open windows and doors when cleaning the house. This is to let the strong odor from the chemicals that we use for cleaning to stay out of the house and to let fresh air to come in. Now, we'll go to the treatment. Currently, there's no cure for asthma, but treatment can help control the symptoms so people with asthma can be able to live a normal and active life. The treatment includes the following. Inhalers. This is the main treatment for those people with asthma. It is a device that lets people with asthma breathe in medicine. Tablets and other treatments may also be needed if asthma is severe. As caregiver, we are not authorized to give the mentioned treatment to the people with asthma. What we can contribute to the well-being of asthma patient is, first, uh, we have to talk to his or, his or her family and inform them to make every effort to eliminate any possible allergens from their home. In addition to what I uh, discussed previously on reduced asthma symptoms, we can advise the family of the patient to control dust mites. Keep the surfaces of their home clean and uncluttered. Make vacuum once or twice a week. Prevent death, pet thunder. Prevent pollen from getting inside the house. And control or, if possible, eliminate pests. Second, you can also assist the patient to do a chest physiotherapy, which includes breathing exercises, physical training, and inhalation therapy. It is known that breathing exercises improve respiratory function that control asthma attack. Third, swimming has been recommended in the past as a good form of exercise for people with asthma. It was thought that breathing in warm, moist air, moist air rather than cold dry air might reduce the risk of asthma attack and, and that swimming could help develop good breathing practices. Lastly, we can also advise the family or the asthma patient to position itself in a proper position, polar position, during the asthma attack. The above mentioned exercises will teach the patient, especially children, on how to control their own symptoms and thereby build self-confidence which is sometimes lacking in asthmatic people. Thank you, Kuya Reid. And now, uh, Kuya James, please proceed to discuss the finance symptoms of an asthma. Okay, sir. So, ano po ba ang mapapansin natin sa mga pasyente na suffer from the, sa asthma? Number one, coughing. Kapag may asthma po ang pasyente natin, as we discussed earlier, inflamed po ang kanyang airways. At the same time, marami pong lupus. 
Coughing is a normal reflex of our body para ilabas po yung foreign irritant pero in an asthmatic patient, dalasan po dry cough kasi hindi po mailabas yung mucus due to narrowing of airways. Pangalawa po, meron po tayong breathing difficulty or short and shortness of breath. Nagkakaroon po tayo ng hirap sa paghinga dahil hindi po makaflow ang air freely sa ating airways. Gawa po ng pamamaga and overproduction po ng mucus sa daluyan po ng ating hininga. Feeling tired. Sa isang asthmatic patient po, limited po ang baga nila na mag-collect ng oxygen. At kapag kulang po ang oxygen sa kanilang katawan, it makes them feel tired. Number four, chest pain. Madalas po sa asthmatic patient ang chest pain kasi namamaga po at naminikip po ang kanilang daluyan ng paghinga. Kadalasan po makikita pa natin ng mga pasyente ng asthmatic kapag ina-attack po sila, napapahawak po sila sa kanilang po mga nabibib o napapahinto po sila sa kanilang ginagawa. Number five, wheezing. Other names for this is kuni, sipol, or hagok. Nabibigay po ang tunog din. Kadalasan po ito maririnig during exhalation. Number six, we have sleeping problems. People with asthma often suffer at night time other than physical activities. Kadalas po at ang asthma kasi di ba po, isa sa mga triggering factors nito is yung mga allergens like yung bed bugs or dust mites. So usually, madalas po sa mga pieces and bed covers na mamahay. Sa pang-reset ng cooling of air, kadalasan po dito sa Saudi Arabia, naka-aircon na po tayo. So kapag the air we breathe should be warm and moist, kapag dry and cool po, ang air na nalalangha po natin sa isa, sa isa pong asthmatic patient na titrigger po ang kanyang uh, pagkatake. So maraming maraming salamat po, Sir Rodel. Thank you, Sir James. And now po, magpuprosit na po tayo sa filman, uh, meal plan po ng ating pasyente with uh, uh, asthma po, no? So, ang aming po required uh, ikal per meal or per day, a meal, a meal per day is 1,600 calories. Uh, sir, Nate, did proceed po para i-discuss yung breakfast ng uh, meal na ito. Nakamute ka, nakamute ka Kuya Nathan. Uh, sorry. Thank you for your time. On this segment of our report, we'll go now to the meal plan we prepared for our Filipino asthmatic child. Uh, I prepared uh, breakfast, which is the traditional uh, Filipino soup, or sopas, omelet, and water. The ingredients are the following. 2 oz of chicken breast, 50 grams of macaroni, 50 grams of evaporated milk, 1 pot of butter, 1 tablespoon of garlic, 50 grams of uh, uh, 50 grams of onion, 50 grams of carrots, half cup garbage, 100 grams of chicken bouillon, 1 tablespoon of fish sauce, 1 cup of water, and 1 medium omelette. Below the table, uh, you can see the total uh, macronutrients that we get from the prepared breakfast. We have uh, 18 grams of sugar, 4 grams of fiber, 36 grams of carbohydrates, 42 grams of protein, 20 and 23 grams of fats. For the, for the meal, we will get 308 kilocalories. Okay, uh, uh, we will go to uh, uh, morning snack. We prepared here as uh, caramelized sweet potatoes in a stick plus water. Uh, but uh, we removed the stick of the, the sweet potato uh, for safety reasons, okay? Here are, uh, these are the ingredients. Uh, 50 grams of sweet potatoes, half cup of brown sugar, and three tablespoons of vegetable. From this uh, morning snack, we get uh, uh, 22 grams of sugar, uh, 8 grams of fiber, uh, 68 gra grams of carbs, uh, 5 grams of uh, protein, 15 grams of fat, and uh, calories of 189. Now we'll turn over the floor to uh, my colleague, uh, Kuya James, for the lunch and uh, afternoon snacks. Okay, sir. Thank you, Sir Nathan. 
Um, Sir Redel, being the host po, um, paki-open daw po or paki-tanggap, admit si Sir Cham. Okay na po, Sir Redel? Uh, okay na po? Can I check po na po, Sir? For lunch, I have prepared breaded chicken with rice and soup, and for drinks, we have uh, orange juice. So we have a serving of two ounces of chicken breast, one, si one medium size of egg, one ounce of breadcrumbs, one <coughs> of uh, uh, vegetable oil, one tablespoon of salt, 50 grams of rice and chicken soup, and 50 grams also of orange juice. With a total of 326 kilocalories, 15 grams of fat, protein is 37 grams, 36 grams of carbohydrate, fiber is 8 grams, and 10 grams of sugar. Now for our snack up, afternoon. I have prepared a pizza toast. <coughs> We have a serving of two slices of bread, 50 grams of pizza sauce, 1 ounce of mozzarella cheese, 25 grams of ham, 25 grams of pineapple chunk with a total of 416 kilocalories, 20 grams of fat, 41 grams of protein, 52 grams of carbohydrates, fiber of 6 grams, and 18 grams of sugar. And as for the dinner, uh, we prepared spaghetti with fried chicken. Ingredients are a half cup of spaghetti sauce, 50 grams of spaghetti noodles, half serving of ground beef, half link of hot dog, 10 grams of cheese, 25 grams of onion, one uh, tablespoon, teaspoon of garlic, one tablespoon of salt, half tablespoon of pepper, three tablespoon of vegetable oil, 30 grams of condensed milk, and one piece of uh, small fried chicken leg. The total uh, cake is 397. The total fat is 34 grams. Uh, total protein is 56 grams. Carbs, total carbs is 44 grams. Total fiber is 4 grams. And sugar is 30 grams. And ayun po ang aming presentation for today. Maraming po sa ay summary pa po pala ito po ang total summary ng aming meal for the day yung total uh, kay Cal po ng breakfast is calories a total maximum nutrients po ng aming meal calories is 1,636 uh, kay Cal total fat is uh, 107 grams total protein is 178 grams total carbs is 236 grams, total fiber is 30 grams, and total sugar is 98 grams. Thank you, Paul. Okay, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Group three. Yeah.